Hey, also, like I said, 4.1 deals with polynomials. So I'm going to give you a lot of definitions off the start talking about polynomials. So y'all, first off, a polynomial is an expression that contains one or more terms. All right, so that means we need to figure out what is a term. So when you're dealing with a polynomial, the terms of a polynomial are basically the products. And they're the products that are separated by addition and subtraction. So these are products that are separated by addition and subtraction. All righty, a degree. So there's two types of degrees we're gonna look at. The degree of a term So y'all, the degree of a term is equal to the exponent of that term. Then they talk about what we call the degree of the polynomial. All right, so the degree of the actual polynomial is equal to the highest exponent of the polynomial. Okay, so it is actually the highest exponent of all the terms of that polynomial. All right, now they'll talk about a constant term. So the constant term is the term of the polynomial that does not have a variable. So it's the term of the polynomial that does not contain a variable. So basically, it's the number at the end. <clears throat> so a constant term will be something like a five, three, negative two, and so on. It's just going to be a number. It will not contain that variable at all. All right, y'all. So two last definitions are the leading term and the leading coefficient. So the leading term is the term 
of the polynomial that contains the highest exponent. And if you remember up here, the degree of the polynomial is equal to the highest exponent of the polynomial. So that means that the leading term, since it contains the highest exponent, it determines what the degree of that polynomial is based off of its exponent. And y'all, the last definition will be what we call the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable of the leading term. So it's the number in front of the variable of the leading term. So my leading term gives me two things. It gives me the degree of the polynomial because of its exponent. And I can also find my leading coefficient there because it's going to be the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent. So y'all, I'm going to give y'all a second to catch up and then we're going to work an example using these definitions. All right, y'all, so let's work an example. So for this example, they want me to identify the terms the degree of each term the degree of the polynomial then we're going to identify the leading term leading coefficient and the constant term. All right, my polynomial is a negative two r to the eight minus nine r to the fourth plus three r to the third plus 4R minus 9. So y'all will list the terms first. Um, so when we list the terms, we're going to put a comma in between them. Now notice, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms on this. So the first term would be negative 2r to the 8. Then we would put a comma. Second term is negative 9r to the 4th. So we treat the subtraction like the sign of this term, okay? The third term is 3r to the 3rd. Since it's being added, I don't have to put a plus. I just got to put 3r to the 3rd. My next term is the 4R. And then the last term is my constant term, and it's a negative 9. So there's my five terms that we said we had. So then they want to know the degree of each of these terms. So they say the degree of the first term. Then they'll have degree of the second term. 
Then we'll look at the degree of the third term. Degree of the fourth term. And then finally, the degree of the fifth term. All right, let one in real quick. All righty, so remember, the degree of each term is equal to the highest exponent of each term. So the degree of my first term, negative 2R8, the exponent is an 8. So that makes the degree of the first term an 8. The degree of my second term, which is the negative 9R to the fourth, X exponent is a four, so it's got a degree four. All right, my third term was three R to the third, exponent of three, so that makes its degree a three. My fourth term is a four R. So y'all, here's the thing on this one. It's not showing an exponent. Anytime you have a variable that does not have an exponent, we treat it like a one, okay? Because remember, r to the first is r, so they don't have to write the exponent if it's a one. But anytime you don't see an exponent behind the variable, it's a one, so that makes the degree of the fourth term a one. Now the constant term. There's no variable at all. So since there's no variable at all with that constant term, we say it has a degree of zero. So y'all, the constant term has a degree zero. A single variable without an exponent has a degree of one. All right, then they wanna know the degree of the polynomial. Well, remember, the degree of this polynomial is equal to the highest degree of all the terms. And the highest exponent up here is an 8. So that makes the degree of this polynomial an 8. All right, they want the leading term. <clears throat> so the leading term is the term up here that had the highest exponent. So for us, the leading term is going to be this first term, which is a negative 2 or to the eighth. So the whole, and see, this is the product. It's negative 2 times R8. So that's what I was talking about. It was products that were separated by adding and subtracting. So my leading term is the whole term that had the highest exponent. So then they want to know the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient was the number in front of the variable that had the highest exponent. So since negative 2 r to 8 was my leading term, the leading coefficient will be the negative 2. Then, y'all, the last thing they wanted to know was the constant term. Well, remember, my constant term was the number at the end that did not contain a variable. So our constant term will be this negative 9 at the end. All right, so that covers everything they had. So remember, the terms are separated by adding and subtracting. If you had subtraction in front of it, we treat it like a negative for that term, okay? So notice I had one, two, three, four, five terms. And then the degree of each term was the exponent for each term. The degree of the polynomial was the highest overall exponent, which was that eight. So y'all not too bad. Now, 
this next question, dealing with these polynomials, but what they want us to do, they want us to arrange the terms of the polynomial in descending powers of B. All righty, so let me pull this down a little bit. All righty, so let's get the polynomials. They got a 18 minus 4B to the six plus a 4B minus 6B to the four. So what they mean in descending powers of B, they mean go from the highest exponent down to the constant term. So go from the highest exponent down to the constant term. Now, if you don't have a constant term like mine did have a constant term to 18, if you don't have a constant term, then you're just going to go in order of the exponents. So I want the highest exponent first. So the term with the highest exponent is the negative 4b to the 6. Y'all, the next highest exponent will be the b to the 4. So that term is negative 6b to the 4. So we would put that next. All right, so that takes care of the 4b to the 6, negative 6b to the 4th. Next would be the exponent of 1, remember. Remember, that b has a 1 for its exponent. That's being added, so that'll give me a plus 4b. And then at the end is my constant term, which is my 18. So that's what they mean in descending power. We go from the highest exponent down till we get to our constant term. All right, so this first section, they just gonna give you a lot of different things we're gonna do with these polynomials, okay? All right, y'all, so next. So next, they want us to evaluate the polynomial function for the given values of the variable. All righty, so they're giving us a polynomial. P of X equals 2X squared minus 4X plus 5. Then they got a semicolon, and they want me to find P of 3, P of a negative 1, and P of a zero. So basically three problems in one here. So let's start with P of three. Now this is just symbolism. Remember P of X is telling me that the variable is X. Remember when I put a three here, they want me to take this polynomial and put a three in for both of these X's. So doing that, we get two times three squared minus four times three 
plus 5. Now, I'm going to start doing order of operations. Parentheses have first priority. So remember, I'm going to follow the PEMDAS. I'm going to do parentheses first if I can inside of them. If I can't, I'm going to go to exponents next. Then I'm going to multiply or divide. And remember, multiplying and dividing, you go left to right to see which happens first. And then I'm going to add or subtract left to right, whichever I hit first. So the exponent is first. So bring down this two. And we're going to figure out what three squared is. Now, that exponent of two tells me to multiply the three times itself two times. So three times three, two times is nine. Now I'm just bringing everything else down. So on that step, I did my exponent. The next step, I'm going to multiply everything that I can. So remember, before I add and subtract, I got to multiply or divide. So we can multiply to 2 times 9 and get an 18. Minus 4 times 3 is 12. And then plus my 5. So I did my two steps. Here I multiplied and here I multiplied. Now, add or subtract left to right. So I would do 18 minus 12. That gives me 6. And then that 6 plus 5 gives me 11. So y'all on that one, I get a final answer of 11. So let's do P of negative 1 next. So P of negative 1 wants me to put a, put a negative 1 in for both of my x's. So I'm going to have 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 5. And I'm going to follow the same steps on this one. Start with that exponent first. So bring that 2 down. Negative 1 squared is a negative 1 times negative 1, which will give us a positive 1. And y'all, if you're using a calculator on this one, when you try to figure out what negative 1 squared is, put the negative 1 in parentheses or it'll give you the wrong answer. On the calculator, you got to let it know that you're multiplying a negative one times a negative one. All right, now I'm bringing everything else down. Now I'm going to multiply this and my second term. So two times one will give me a two. Here you're subtracting a four times a negative one. Four times negative one is negative four but you're subtracting a negative four. So y'all, when you got subtraction being multiplied by a negative, that's gonna make that thing a positive four and then bring down your positive five. So remember, two negatives will make that a positive. And y'all, the last step, add. So two plus four is six. 6 plus 5 is 11. So it looks like my popular answer of the day is 11, right? All righty, y'all. Now, P of 0. P of 0 wants me to take this and put a 0 in for both of these x's. So I got 2 times 0 squared minus four times zero plus five. So you know, if I start with my exponent again, I bring down that two. Well, zero times zero is zero. And you know, you see what's happening to these zeros. The zero, well, two times zero is a zero minus 
four times zero is a zero plus my five. And y'all look at that. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero plus five is a positive five. So notice, when you put a zero in for the variable, the answer will be whatever that constant term is. So since my constant term was five, I got a five for that answer. So you'll have a problem where you do that. Not too bad. You just got to keep up with order of operations, okay? All right, so the next thing we look at will have more than one problem, okay? So y'all, let's look at what we call like terms. So like terms is when I'm adding and subtracting things. So here's the thing. On like terms, you can only combine terms that have the same variables and the same exponents. So what I mean by that, 3x squared will add to a 5x squared. So if I add a 3x squared to a 5x squared, all I can change are the numbers. I cannot change my variables. So if I was adding a 3x squared to a 5x squared, 3 plus 5 gives me 8x squared. Okay, I cannot change exponents when we add or subtract. So y'all remember that. Cannot change exponents when adding or subtracting. So if you start out with x squareds and you're adding, you're going to end up with x squareds. Same thing when we subtract, okay? So that means you cannot add an x squared to a y squared and combine them, okay? So y'all, on these examples, we're going to do what they call collect like terms. So let me start with a 8w squared minus 16w squared plus a 19w squared. So our final answer, the like part is the w squareds. They all have the same variable with the same exponents. So all three of these can be added or subtracted. So what we got to do is figure out what 8 minus 16 is plus 19. So y'all on the side, I'm going to figure out 8 minus 16 equals a negative 8. And then that negative 8 plus 19. So when you got unlike signs, 8 minus 16 I subtract and get the sign of the higher number. So 16 minus 8 is 8. The larger number is negative. So that made that a negative 8. Here I'm doing a negative 8 plus 19. Unlike signs, so you would do 19 minus 8, which is 11. The larger sign is positive, so the 11 stays positive. So that gives me what? 11 W squared. So notice, 
I didn't make that a W6 or anything. I kept the W squared part the same, okay? So once again, collect like terms. And this is a big part of doing this in college algebra when y'all get there, okay? All right, y'all, let's see what we do here. 7x minus 4p minus 3x plus 28p. So notice, this x can only add or subtract to that x, and this p can only add or subtract to that p. So I'm going to start with my x's. So for my x's, I got to figure out 7 minus 3, which will give me 4. So that's going to give me 4 x's. And then we look at the p. You got negative 4p plus 28. So negative 4 plus 28. So unlike signs again, so 28 minus 4 is 24. Larger number is positive, so that stays positive. So that means I'm going to have a positive 24p. All right, we cannot add anything else because x's and p's do not match. So that would be our final answer. So y'all, y'all got questions on the like terms yet? All right, not seeing nothing, so let's go on. All right, collect like terms again. 8B plus a 6 minus 4 plus 5B minus 9B plus 3. All righty, so notice, I can add the Bs together, and then I can add my constant term or my numbers together. So I'm going to start with the Bs. I got an 8B that'll add to a 5B minus the 9B. So for that, we got to figure out 8 plus 5 minus 9. So y'all, let's see what we get. 8 plus 5 is 13, so that's going to give me 13 minus 9, which will give me 4. So for my Bs, I'm going to have 4B. Now my numbers are like terms. I got a 6, a negative 4, and a positive 3. So 6 minus 4 plus 3. We'll see what that equals, and that'll give us our number. So here we go. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 gives us a 5. So since that's a positive 5, I'm going to put a plus, and then our 5. All right, y'all, let me see what my chat's saying. Oh, perfect. You got a 5. Good job. So that's what we was looking for on that one. All righty, so that moves us into what we call adding polynomials. So y'all, let me flip this page. So adding polynomials. And y'all, that's the last two things we're going to do in this first section is add polynomials and then subtracting. Now, the trick on polynomials, they're going to give me the two polynomials will be in parentheses. So we'll have something in parentheses plus something else in parentheses. When we're adding, we can just drop the parentheses and add like terms. So drop the parentheses. 
in ad like terms. So I will say subtraction will be a little trickier when we get to that. But adding polynomials, I'm just going to drop the parentheses and add my like terms. So here we go. For this example, we're going to add. So my first polynomial is going to be 2a squared plus 10r squared plus 10. We're going to add that to the second polynomial, which is a 7a squared minus 8r squared minus 2. Now, the reason I can drop parentheses is because I can treat it like a positive 1 in front of these parentheses. And if you multiply by a positive 1, you're not changing any signs. So we're just going to drop the parentheses. 10a squared, I mean 2a squared plus 10r squared plus 10 plus 7a squared minus the 8r squared minus the 2. So notice they're all the same sign as they were inside my parentheses. So now we're going to add the like terms. So the a squared will add to the a squared. So we got 2a squared. We're adding the 7a squared. So for that, one, we're just going to add 2 plus 7. And that's going to give us 9. So we got 9a squared. Next, we'll do the r squared. I got 10r squared. That'll add to a negative 8r squared. So basically, we got 10 minus 8, which will give me a 2. So that's going to give me a positive 2 r squared. And y'all, the last set of like terms will be the 10 and the negative 2. So that'll be 10 minus 2, which gives us 8. So at the very end is a positive 8. Now remember, I cannot go no further because although the exponents match, the variables don't match. So at that point, we're as far as we can go. So y'all, basically, I could have done the adding like this. I could have did 2a squared plus 7 and got my 9, 10 minus 8 and got my 2r squared, and then 10 minus 2 and got my 8. Okay. Now, what will be trickier will be subtracting these polynomials. So that'll be a set of parentheses minus my second set of parentheses. So the trick on subtracting polynomials we got to distribute our subtraction through the second parentheses. So I'm going to drop the first parentheses. So I'll drop the first parentheses and won't change nothing. But then I'm going to distribute the subtraction through the second parentheses. After doing that, then I'm going to do like up here and add like terms. Now, the reason we're doing that, we want you to realize you're not just subtracting that first term. You're subtracting this whole polynomial. So that's why we have to distribute that subtraction. And y'all, they're going to give us two of these on subtraction, okay? 
So let's start our first one. So these will say subtract the polynomials. All right, so my first one has, in the first parentheses, 4B minus 9, close parentheses, minus, open up your second parentheses, negative 5B plus 8. So what did we say? Drop the first parentheses. So bring out that 4B minus 9. Now, when I distribute this negative or that subtraction, I treat it like a negative one. So I'm distributing a negative one times everything in my parentheses. So y'all, first off, let's distribute that negative. So what's going to happen to that negative one times that negative five B? Well, y'all, a negative times a negative is going to make that a positive 5B. Then when I distribute that negative times that positive 8 over here, a negative times a positive makes that a negative 8. So notice this. When you straight up drop the parentheses, everything stayed the same as it was inside. But when you drop parentheses that follow subtraction, notice my negative 5B become positive and my positive 8 become negative. So subtraction changes the sign of everything in the second parentheses. All right, y'all. Now I'm going to add like terms. My 4B will add to my 5B. So on that, and I'm just going to do 4 plus 5, which gives me 9. So I got 9B. And then I'm going to do my negative 9 and my negative 8. Well, when you got a negative number minus a number, that's like you're adding two negatives. And when you add two negatives, it will stay negative. So when you add like signs that don't follow the like signs or positive, like adding, I mean, like uh, multiplying and dividing. So if you got a negative nine and you subtract eight from that, you're going to have a negative 17. So add the numbers and keep them negative. And y'all, that gives at the end, I'm going to have a minus 17. It's as far as we can go. So we're done. So be careful dropping those parentheses, okay? So we gave you two of these subtractions because we wanted y'all to really get the idea, okay? So we got another one that says subtract the polynomials. All righty. So my first one, 4R squared. Minus a 4R minus a R to the third minus 8R squared minus R to the third minus 17R. All righty. So the first thing we'll do, drop my first parentheses. All these will stay the same. So 4R squared minus 4R minus R to the third. But now remember here, I'm going to distribute that like a negative one. So a negative times a positive makes that a negative 8R squared. That negative times that negative R to the third makes that a positive R to the third. And y'all, that negative times that negative 17R, two negatives, makes that a positive 17R. So y'all notice, once again, the positive eight went to negative. This is like a negative one, went to a positive one. Negative 17 
went to a positive 17. All right, so now I'm just going to add like terms. So the R squared will add to the R squared. So we got four minus eight. So this time my negative number is bigger, so it will be negative. Eight minus four is four. So we're going to have a negative four R squared. Now I'm just going to do the R's. So I got negative four R. And at the end, I got a 17 R. So notice this one's in different order than this one. So the R adds to the R. So I got a negative four plus 17. So unlike signs, 17 minus four is 13. Larger signs positive, so that will stay positive. So that's going to give me a positive 13 R. And y'all look at this. I got a negative R to the third and a positive R to the third. Anytime you don't have a number in front of that variable, it's a one. So this is like a negative one plus a positive one. And y'all look at that. That gives me a big zero. So that means that this negative R third and this positive R third, since you get a zero out of that, they basically cancel each other out. And our final answer will be the negative 4R squared plus 13R. And y'all, anytime you got the same variable with the same exponent, Anytime you got a negative number plus that positive same number, they're going to cancel out for us, okay? Y'all, that was 4-1. So 4-1 was really getting you good at adding and subtracting and combining like terms. All right, so we get to move on now. Let me move that camera back up. And y'all, let me see. Uh, 4, 2 is nothing but multiplying. So 4.2 will be what we call multiplying. polynomials all right so here's a a little property for multiplying polynomials if we had x to the a times x to the b if we're multiplying variables x's times x's we add the exponents so that I get an x, whatever a plus b equals. So multiply the variables by adding those exponents, okay? So remember, I'm just adding the exponents, which means this. I can actually change exponents by multiplying, okay? So, play with these examples. These are going to say multiply. Now, I'm going to start out with this first one. 3R to the third times 7R. So you're actually going to multiply the numbers. This rule only applies to my variables here, okay? So I will multiply the numbers. So the 3 times 7 is going to give us 21. Now for the R, the R3 times the R, well, y'all, there's not an exponent after the R. 
So what exponent did we say we would treat that as? And y'all remember when I was doing that degree stuff, I said if there wasn't an exponent there, we treated it like a a one. There you go. So for my R's, I got to add three plus one. So my final answer will be 21 R. Three plus one gives me four. And y'all, that's the trick on multiplying. Multiply the numbers, and then on the variables, the R3 times R4, I mean, the R3 times the R1 gave me an R4. Now y'all watch this. 5C times a negative 6C squared D to the Four. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply the numbers. Five times negative six is going to give us a negative 30. Now, that C can only multiply by that C squared. So remember, this C has an exponent of a one by it. So for the C, I'm going to add one plus two and get a three. And y'all guess what? That's everything out of here. So the D4 didn't have a D to multiply. So the D4 will stay the same and come down as a D to the fourth. Okay, so you can only change the variable that looks like that variable. All right, y'all, moving on. So now they're getting a little bigger. They're putting them in parentheses. 6M5 in 4 times a negative 5 M3 in five. All right, y'all, so number times number, M's times M, N times N. So let's see what we get. We're going to do the six times a negative five. That's going to give me a negative 30. And y'all, then I'm going to do the M5 times the M3. What are y'all going to get on that? The M to the what? So an eight. So there you go. So five plus three is eight. And then my N, the N to the fourth, will multiply by the N to the fifth and give us what? into the ninth. Good job. Now, I will say this. When you're doing these on math lab, to do the exponents, you got to do the, the box on the bar down there that has the little box for exponents next to it, okay? So you'd like put in your M, hit that box, and then it'll give you the exponent. Arrow down, then put in your N, Hit that box again and put in your nine. All right, y'all, then let's see. Oh, so my number four here is a 3A minus 2 times a 4A plus 4. So we got a special name that we call it when we multiply two things times two things. Have y'all ever heard of the FOIL method? 
And we use that when we got two things times two things to let us know that we got four steps to do when we're multiplying. So watch this. This F wants me to multiply the first term from each parentheses. Now remember, these variables don't have exponents, so both of these A's, I would treat that like they had a one. So if I multiply 3A times a 4A, I'm going to get a 12A, 1 plus 1 gives me 2. So that's going to give me 12A squared. That was the F, the first one from each parenthesis. The O means the outermost. So the outermost two terms are the 3A and the 4. They're the outermost two terms. So if we multiply 3A times a 4, we're going to get a positive 12A. So the 3 times 4 I could do. The A didn't have another A to multiply, so it stayed the same on that one, okay? This I, the I stands for the inner two most terms. The inner two most terms are that negative two times that 4A. A negative two times a 4A, negative two times four is negative eight. There's not an A here to multiply by that A, so it's going to stay the same. And y'all, this L, it means the last two terms from each parentheses. So that'll be this negative two times that four. Negative two times four gives me a negative eight. So remember, Distribute the 3A through the second parentheses, then distribute the negative 2 through the second parentheses. I got four things here. Here's my question to y'all. Can I simplify that any further? Definitely, definitely. Good job. Because y'all, you got like terms right here. And anytime we got like terms, we got to combine those. So bring down your 12A squared. The like terms will be 12As minus 8As. So 12 minus 8 will give me a positive 4A. So remember, now that I'm adding and subtracting, the variable has to stay the same, okay? And then at the end, y'all bring down the negative 8. All right, so now A squared cannot add to A's. Both of those cannot add to the number. So we are now done. So now they're just going to hit us with a lot of fooling in here for a second because Y'all, we do a lot of foiling in college algebra, okay? So let's try number my five here. B minus D times B minus D. All right, so once again, I'm going to do the foil to that. Anytime I got two things times two things, I'm thinking FOIL. Nobody has exponents. That means all of these have a one for their exponents. So y'all, let me start out with the B. The F is the first one times the first one. A B times a B is a B. One plus one gives me a B squared. Now that B will multiply times that negative D. So remember, a positive times a negative is going to make that a negative. And y'all, the B times the D, they don't match. So we're just going to leave that a B times a D. 
Now, the inner one is that negative D here times that positive B. A negative times a positive is a negative. And y'all, the D and the B don't match. So all I can do is write them as a product. And I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. So when I do a D times a B, I'm going to get another B, D. And the reason I keep them in alphabetical order is so that those like terms are easier to recognize, okay? Now the L is the last one. That's that negative D times a negative D. So a negative times a negative, we'll make that a positive. A D times a D, I add the one plus one, and I get a two. Whoops, that was a what, a D two. I forgot my D there. Now, B squared minus BD minus BD plus D squared. In the middle, you have like terms. These do not cancel because they're both negative. So y'all, bring down the B squared. Remember, that's like a negative one added to a negative one. A negative one minus one will give us a negative two. So that's going to give us a negative two B, D. Remember, I can't change the way they look when I'm adding and subtracting. And y'all, at the end, we'll bring down our positive D squared. So get good at foiling. Distribute the first term of this parentheses, then distribute the second term. And remember, when you distribute that D, you got to distribute that negative times those also, okay? All right, y'all, so let me give y'all a second. We're doing more multiplying. That's all this 4.2 is doing is multiplying, okay? All righty, y'all. So my next one is my number six. And y'all, number six is a doozy here. Watch this. I got a W minus four times W squared plus 4W plus 16. Now, I don't have a special name for this one, but I will do it like I did the foiling. The W will multiply by all three of these. And then that negative four is going to multiply by all three of these. So we got to distribute both of these times all three of these. And basically, when you distribute a W, you're just going to add a W to everybody. Now, remember, that W has a one by it, and this W has a one by it. So let's start with our W. W times W squared is a W. One plus two gives us three. That W times that four W is a positive four. One plus one gives me a W squared. And then that positive W times that positive 16 gives me a 16 W. So since I distributed a positive W, all these stayed positive. But now I'm distributing a negative 4. So a negative 4 times a W squared is a negative 4 W squared. So notice, since I'm just distributing a number, the variables ain't changing on this part. This negative 4 times 4W gives me a negative 16W. And then finally, I would do that negative 4 times that positive 16 
That's going to be what a negative, uh, let's see, four times 16 is what, 64. All right, so y'all notice I'm going to start adding like terms. So the W to the third comes down because there's no other W thirds. Oh, look at this. My W. Say again. Yeah, case of squeeze this cheese out. Thank you. I was looking for you. Did you play already? Oh, someone's on. On. I'm gonna have to. Okay, let me think. That might have worked. All righty. So look at this. Positive four w squared, negative four w squared. Well, four minus four gave me zeros. So y'all, the w squared terms basically they cancel out. So now I'm going to add the W's together. Y'all look at that. Positive 16W, negative 16W. That adds to zero. So that means my W's cancel out. And there's nothing else for me to add to the number. So bring down your minus 64. So remember, if the numbers are opposite in sign, those terms will cancel, okay? All righty, so now they got a W plus eight times a W plus nine. All righty, so we're going to foil this one because I do have two things times two things. So this one, number six, it was like a foil on steroids, okay, because you had a lot more multiplying. But this one goes back to the foil. Remember, these Ws both have a one by them. So W times W, one plus one gives me W squared. W times nine gives me a nine W. Now doing my inner, 8 times W is a 8W. And finally, the 8 times 9 is a positive 72. So I went, since every one of these factors was positive, all these have to be positive. All right, y'all notice I got like terms in the middle. So bring down your W squared. Nine plus eight gives me 17 Ws and then bring down my positive 72. So the main thing is to realize when I multiply Ws times W, that's when I can change those exponents, okay? When I'm adding Ws plus Ws, they stay Ws. All right, so I'm going to go down. So this really will be y'all's number nine. Number eight was really just like this one. So number nine that I'm going to do is a V minus 4G squared. So y'all, here's the thing. When you got a V minus 4G in parentheses, being squared, it's really foil because that tells me to write this two times. So you're going to have a V minus 4G times a V minus 4G. Okay, so write that twice. Now, foil this. All right, y'all, V times V. Remember, the V's have ones and the G's have one. So V times V, one plus one gives me a V squared. Keep up with the signs. Positive times a negative. My next sign will be negative. V times 4G is a 4GV. Remember, I'm keeping my variables in alphabetical order. Now, I'm going to do this negative 4G times V. I get another negative 
G V. Now watch out, y'all. I got a negative four times a negative four. So this last term will be positive. 4G times 4G. Four times four is 16. And then one plus one gives me a G squared. So they're sort of tricky when they throw these letters all at you, but just keep up with your signs as you're multiplying through. And then it's easier. So now, see, I got a negative 4GV and a negative 4GV. It's easy to tell that these are like terms. So I would bring down my V squared. Negative 4 minus 4. Remember, negative 4 minus 4 is a negative. 4 plus 4 is 8. So treat this like you're adding two negatives. When you add two negatives, they will stay negative, okay? So that's going to give me a negative 8 GV. Now, if you made it VGs instead of GVs, it will take it either way. At the end, I'll bring down my positive 16 G squared. All right, y'all, so I'm going to skip 10 and go to 11. 10 was basically like this once you got it pulled out, okay? So let's see. Uh, so the last ones are dealing with what we call conjugate pairs. So conjugate pairs. That's when you have something like A plus B times A minus B. Notice, everything's the same except one's being added and one's being subtracted. When you got conjugate pairs, they end up as an A squared minus B squared. You're only going to end up with two terms because what's going to happen, my outer and my inner terms, after I foil one of these, you'll see that they're going to cancel out. So y'all watch this pattern for my number 11. I got a T plus 8 times a T minus 8. So I'm going to foil this all the way out. T times T, remember 1 plus 1, Gives me a T squared. T times negative 8 gives me a negative 8T. Positive 8 times T is a positive 8T. And then, y'all, that positive 8 times that negative 8 is a negative 64. So y'all, what can I do next to that? Well, we're gonna add like terms because look, T's add to T's in the middle. So good job, you're gonna combine. But y'all, what happens when you combine these two terms? You got a negative 8 added to a positive 8. Well, negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So these middle terms, they cancel each other out. And that's what this is saying. You're only going to end up with the first term squared minus the last term squared. Well, here we go. I got my t squared. My last term was an 8. Well, if you square an 8, you get the 64. So you always end up with two terms being subtracted. All right, so let me let y'all write that. We got one more to go. And y'all, this last one is also going to be 
Conjugate pairs, okay? So what would this be? Number 12, I think. 5R plus 4 times 5R minus 4. All right, so 5R plus 4 times 5R minus 4. And you all do this one, and I'll show you the shortcut. These are definitely conjugate pairs. The 5Rs match up. The 4s match up. Only difference is one's being added, one's being subtracted. So let's foil this out. 5R times 5R is a 25R squared. Remember, 1 plus 1. 5R times negative 4 is a negative 20R. Now I'm going on the inside. 4 times 5R is a positive 20R. And y'all, finally, that positive 4 times that negative 4 is a negative 16. So y'all see what's happening here in the middle? You got a negative 20R, positive 20R. Those things are going to cancel again. So that all I end up with is a 25R squared minus my 16. So y'all, let me tell y'all a little thing about conjugate pairs. If we realize we have conjugate pairs, we can shortcut FOIL those. So let me show you what I mean by shortcut FOIL. So if I take the 5R plus 4, times the 5R minus 4. Shortcut foiling means to multiply the first two terms together. What well, a 5R times 5R is a 25R squared. And then we multiply the last two terms together. So the 4 times the negative 4 will give me a negative 16. Notice the same answer as I got up here. But remember, conjugate pairs, since they always cancel out the middle terms, we can shortcut those. So y'all knowing that, let's foil this one. What if I had 7m plus 3 times a 7m minus 3? Notice I got conjugate pairs. One's being added, one's being subtracted. Everything else is the same. So we can actually shortcut for this. Any of these that I did with conjugates, we can shortcut. So guess what? 7M times 7M is a 49. One plus one gives me an M squared. And then I would do the three times a negative three and get a negative nine. Conjugate pairs always end up with subtraction in the middle. And y'all, that's what they were meaning by this little property. If you got conjugate pairs, they end up being subtracted, okay? All righty, so let's see. Y'all, that was four, two, so. The next class, we're going to be looking at probably two to three sections. But y'all, Thursday night's class is the probably the most important class we'll do this year. Because Thursday night, we're going to learn how we factor. Factoring is one of the biggest things you're going to need to know for my college algebra classes. So we're going to learn how to factor out a greatest common factor, which we call the GCF. We're going to factor trinomials. 
and all that fun stuff, okay? So Thursday night is a lot of factoring. All right, y'all, so let me stop this share. All right, so tonight, 4-1 and 4-2 to stay on pace with me. 4-1 gave you a lot of definitions for polynomials. 4-2 was mainly doing multiplication, okay? So let me tell you what factoring is going to do. Factoring is going to go in reverse of what I was doing tonight, multiplying, okay? So factoring is almost a way of dividing, you might say. So y'all be here Thursday night because factoring, like I said, is a big thing for college algebra. All right, so I'm going to stop this recording.